Hi everybody. So uh, I'm doing this little talking head here because I wanted to give a little background on what's going on with me and my channel. Um, I know sometimes it takes a long time for me to put out uh, content. There's a long gap between each video I put out. Um, and that's because I got other things going on, going on in life. Um, but for those who don't know me personally, back in March of this year, 2022, I decided to take my love of adventure to the next level. So I actually left my job, uh, canceled the lease on the basement suite that I was living in, loaded up my Pathfinder and just wanted to spend the summer driving around BC, um, hiking, camping, and just really having some really cool experiences and being able to share those experiences with you and the channel. Uh, unfortunately, some things happened that kind of prevented me from realizing that to its fullest, which I'll talk about in a later video. Uh, and that's why I'm here in a spare bedroom at my parents' house. Uh, so back in March, when I left, first I went to Powell River. Uh, I did some backpacking with my sister and her son, just an overnight. Uh, after that, I went to my friend's bison ranch. Uh, now, if you've seen my Assiniboine video, you've uh, met Francois. Uh, he is the manager of this bison ranch that I went and spent a week on. So he showed me around the ranch and uh, he told me about the animals and all that. And I just wanted to address that this video is going to be a little bit different than the rest of my videos. And that a lot of my other videos, they have some sort of story. There's a lot of like, well, this is what we did this and then that. Um, to just try and uh, bring the audience into the experience. Well, this one's a little bit different. This one's more about uh, just Francois showing me around the ranch and just kind of how cool it was to be there and really kind of getting to understand how Francois manages the bison and the ranch and sort of what he does, uh, who he is, and the overall care that the bison get. Because personally, I do generally really believe in getting uh, sustainable, healthy, and happy meat, as I would call it. You know, meat that is raised in uh, a free range setting, if you will. Um, so I really wanted to advertise that. Also just show people how cool of a life this guy lives. Because um, he does re live a really uh, cool lifestyle. Um, and he's, he's pretty lucky to live the way that he does. It's a lot of work. Uh, but you guys are going to get to see uh, some really beautiful landscapes. Uh, you're going to get to learn a little bit about how bison are ranched, and there's a lot of crossover between bison and cattle. Cattle. You're also just going to get to see a lot of bison, and some really cute bison, a bottle feed of bison. So I really hope you enjoy this. In the later video, I'll talk about why I didn't get to do more of the stuff I want to do this summer, but for now, please enjoy the Big Valley Bison Ranch. Getting to the ranch involves driving through some gorgeous rolling hills in the highlands above Kamloops. The ranch is called Big Valley Bison Ranch and sits on approximately 2,500 acres and is home to about 300 bison. Francois has recently finished his diploma in sustainable ranching, and as he puts it, what he does is grow grass. The bison are just a byproduct. The day after I arrived, Francois drove me around with him while he was checking up on the herd, something he does several times a week. Well, yeah, we want most of our our females to calve out in May, June, just because it's easier on the calf. Yeah. And that naturally, that's when they calve out. But like we've sold a bunch. Of this like we sold 300. Yeah. And I mean, like we never had like these little tufts of grass coming up this time of year while they're still on it. Oh, really? So it just shows that it's whatever we're doing is working because we're just starting to take pressure off the land, right? So you don't, you're not like, obviously not hurting them, but you're just doing, taking less, doing the approach of having less bison on the land. So that... Well, yeah, it's, it's about range management, right? These animals haven't lost their wild sensibilities. Even though they technically live within a fence, they are on about 2,000 acres of land. They live an incredibly natural life, 
and that is the goal of Big Valley Bison Ranch. To produce meat that has lived as close to a natural life as possible, while still providing food and medical care when resources are scarce. You could really get a sense that Francois cares about his animals. He knew the personality of individual bison, many were named, and he could tell them apart from each other, even from a distance. There's Johnny Cash. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, he's still little. I'm gonna show you the big boys. They're somewhere. This is Thor. Big boy Thor. Yeah, that's that's the big bison. He's one of our biggest, I think. Thor, and then in front of him, is, that's Paul Blart. He's a big boy, too. And that's uh, Diablo. Having a pee. Yep. That's a break. And we got Bob Ross is up there on the left. And I don't know who's behind him. That's uh, who's that? Uh, that's Kimbo Slice. Big dark black one in the middle. This is Montgomery. He's one of our breeding bull prospects. Montgomery. Yeah. So hopefully he turns into something ice. He's giving us the side eye. They'd really hate it when I come check up on him. She was our first calf this year. This little one right here. Yeah. This is a mean cow. Yeah. She will kill you. Really think about what your next moves are there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, she's a good looking animal. That's Tonka. Tonka. Yeah, he's one of my other prospects. He's a square little calf, like just square. <laughs> so that's why I kept him back. Let's see what he turns into. The amount of thought that goes into raising bison is really amazing. He walked me through just a few things they do for the long-term health of not just the animals, but also the land. Yeah, you just put minerals in it and then you can put oil in those red canisters on top. And then there's a little trigger there, so when the bison go up, they rub up against those black things. And uh, it puts a sensor, and then it sprays them with oil. <laughs> and it's for uh, for the ticks. Uh, so, but it's because we use different methods, we don't really need to do that. But we just put the mineral in there for them. It's, well, it's a custom mineral mix, so it's just like it's got added selenium, uh, magnesium, and copper. We kind of help out the babies with, with some um, oats, some grain, and we have these special feeders that only the babies can go into. Yeah, it's quite a different between what the bison have been and what they have But I mean, like this is in, like, we're working on trying to get it better, but you're not supposed to graze it down like this. Yeah. This is bad for everything. And especially now, we want them off this so that this can grow. Because right now it's trying to grow, and then the bison eat it. So they'll they'll eat the top stuff coming out, and then all that plant's energy that usually goes down into putting the roots down yeah. is just going into putting the top up. Yeah. So then the bottom, the roots get shallower and shallower, and then if we keep doing this for five, ten years, then you're gonna have major erosion and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And your soil quality drops. There's no root base to move nutrients through and to like hold everything together. Yeah. You go to the prairies, like the short grass prairies, and you go dig up some of those roots. I mean, those roots are six to eight feet long. Yeah. Right? And that's healthy grassland. That's what it's supposed to be. For every, for every problem that there is on a farm or a ranch, there's always a biological solution. Always. Yeah. It's not always the easiest or the cheapest way to do it but it's, it's always the best way to do it. She's just hanging out up here by herself. <laughs> That's not creepy. 
Nope. Just a lone bison. What are you doing? Oh, you got a baby. That's why. Did you just have your baby? Yeah, she just, that's, that's a, fresh. That's a fresh baby. Yeah, she just dropped that. Barely even stand up. Still wet, yeah, she just. Green 22, she just popped that out. She's an older cow, I mean, that's not her first rodeo. So she, she's done a few of those already. After watching the newborn get its legs for a bit, we continued on with checking the fence line, climbing up and down some pretty steep slopes. Afterwards, Francois took me down to the staging area where they run the bison to do health checks and provide the necessary vaccinations twice a year. On our way there, we passed a paddock with eight bison. They were getting ready to go to the abattoir. Francois told me it's the hardest part of the job, but an unfortunate reality of the world we live in today. It's what he gets paid for. There are so many people that need to be fed, but he takes comfort in knowing that he has given these animals the best life he can while providing an essential service to his community. The following is just a couple minutes of about a 10 minute walkthrough that he gave me of the bison run. This is your first shoot? Is it this one? They like to explosively shit on the doors. <laughs> uh, it's quite something. But yeah, you get them in here. And this is just the manual one. So you just close it like that. Max it out for the bowls. Uh, just the squeezing part just helps calm them down. Some more space to have they can get turned upside down and stuff. But those doors open that way too. So if we have one go upside down, which does happen, we just open that door and then it flips out and runs out. And then this is the main hydraulic squeeze. So one of the things about having such so much land is there's always old uh, abandoned bits and pieces in it from days past, which includes an old house, which Francois really does not like. <laughs> this is not made for me. This is made for normal people. Oh my, there's a paintball helmet in here? Yeah. Wow, an old ass stove, holy shit. You want some checks? <laughs> oh my god, are there names on it? Back in Nova Scotia. This is actually really cool, I'm pulling this thing out. An old propane stove or whatever it is? No, this is an old fire stove. So you build your fire in there, and that heats your stove. And then you can take coals out of there and dump them underneath your other garbage. Brah. Brah. This is freaky. It's a very old tube. Oh, there's a bird in here. <laughs> Oh, 
No beer. This this has like this odd mixture of like was used in the 50s but was also used like 15 years ago. And someone just up and left. The green helmet. I bet you there's some uh, gold in the holes. <laughs> Start tearing these holes now. Oh my god, kids fucking booties. Yeah. Oh. Good lord. That yeah, that's what that's that gave me the shivers. A nice little house for mice to live in. I was actually thinking about renovating that and I quickly gave up on that idea. <laughs> this is a little chicken coop back here. An <laughs> old electric scooter. That's hilarious. Workshop. Sleds. There's sleds up top. This, for some reason, gives me more heebie-jeebies than the, the house did. Oh shit. What? It's um, rhubarb. Oh, this? Yeah. This is all super edible. Oh wow, look at that. That's, that's a massive rhubarb plant. <laughs> Sometimes, during calving season, a cow will have two calves. In these situations, the cow will only nurse one calf, and leave the other. Or in some cases, a cow will pass away, leaving the calf motherless. When a calf is orphaned, Francois has to wrangle them and put them in a barn, and give them daily feedings of a liquid meal that mimics the mother's milk. I was lucky enough to help with feeding a calf in the past. And that calf actually ended up in a wildlife education center in BC, since it was bottle fed and is somewhat acclimated to humans. This time around, there was another calf named Bocephus, and I got to help out feeding again. He was a frisky little guy and liked to nibble pants as you enter his paddock. After watching Francois feed him one day, the next day I strapped my GoPro to my chest to give everyone an up close view of this adorable giant baby. After feeding, one of the barn cats approached me for pets. I happily obliged. A few days later, we took the drone out to the pasture. As I'm still learning, the shots are a little jerky sometimes, but overall I'm happy with how they turned out. The app on my phone also wasn't working, so I was unable to see what the camera was picking up while I was filming. The first time we took it out, the bison were very curious about the strange sound coming from the tiny flying thing, so they made their way over to us and surrounded us. It was a little nerve wracking. The next day, Francois decided to roll out some bales of hay, which gave me another great opportunity to practice with my drone.
Before I close this out, it just wouldn't be a video about living on a ranch if there wasn't a segment about collecting and chopping firewood. Or, as I like to call it, deconstructing nature. After spending a week with Francois, it was clear to me how much he loves his job. But I mean, who wouldn't? It is incredibly hard and demanding work, but also incredibly rewarding. And the location doesn't make it any harder either. Seeing the way Francois cares for his bison, I really began to get a better understanding of the meat industry. Despite what many people think, to be a good rancher or farmer, you have to really love animals because you want them to live their happiest lives. You have to spend years with those animals, and you want to see them thrive. It also plays a role in the quality of the meat. My friend Mackenzie is a butcher, and says that when an animal comes in that has experienced stress for extended periods of time, you can see it in the meat. It's darker, tougher, and generally unsellable. And butchers will often complain to the suppliers. If they repeatedly get animals that are showing up with this dark meat from the same supplier, they'll even report the farmer or rancher to the authorities. I really want to thank Francois for hosting me and giving me the opportunity to get a first-hand look at how he cares for his animals and land. He taught me so much about ranching that I haven't included in this video. Even beyond that, having the opportunity to just sit quietly amongst a herd of hundreds of grazing bison while the late spring sun sets it's just an absolutely magical experience that most people will never get to have. If you want to follow Francois and are interested in supporting free-range, cruelty-free, happy bison meat from the Big Valley Bison Ranch, you can follow and contact him on Instagram at Big Valley Bison Ranch.